Brother Boo again from the Israel of God. Dealing with another lesson by subject and title. This, e this evening we're going to deal with love, the new commandment. This is titled Love, the New Commandment. And we're going to show you how new this commandment is, sisters and brothers, by letting the scripture deal with, with you. But first, I want to show you something. Because people say little things, make little statements, and people pin their whole salvation on it. But these statements must be qualified. Because if you don't understand these statements that you might read, or somebody might read a verse out, you can end up losing your salvation. Let's go and read such a statement before we get off into this lesson. Let's go into Romans the 10th chapter. Romans the 10th chapter and verse 9. Okay, go ahead. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, I can't deny that. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe that, that the God, the Father raised him from the dead, you're going to be saved. Mm -hmm. I do not deny that. Mm -hmm. Skip down to verse 13 and let's take it further. Go ahead and read. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh-huh. Now, I don't deny that. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I don't deny that. However, let's look at the stipulations, though. Go ahead and read. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Uh-huh. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Now, that is the big sticker, sisters and brothers. How can you call on somebody that you have not believed, and how can you believe on somebody whom you have, of whom you have not heard? That's the thing. A lot of people call upon Jesus, but Paul talks about another Jesus. That's right. Now, you have to call on the right one. Go ahead and read. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And if you're going to hear, you have to have a preacher. Go ahead and read. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Go ahead. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. Now look, he said, and how can they preach except they are sent, sisters and brothers? Now you might ask the question, well, my pastor is sent. Well, I know my preacher is sent. Is he? Mm -hmm. Let's go and see what the preacher's that the Lord sent do for you. Let's go into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, and the Lord will give you some kind of measure or some kind of scale that you can measure and see whether your preacher was sent or not, sister and brother. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 9. Ecclesiastes 12 and 9. Okay, read it. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Wait a minute. Because the preacher was wise, he taught the people what? Knowledge. Knowledge. You have to know something. Go ahead and read. Yeah, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. Uh-huh. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words. Go ahead. And that which was written was upright, even words of truth. He said the preacher sought out to find acceptable words, that which was written and upright, the word, even words of truth. The preacher had to go and deal with the words, sister and brother. Right. Now, let me show you what the Lord, when the Lord sends you a preacher, what is he going to give you? Mm -hmm. Let's go into Jeremiah, the third chapter. Jeremiah, the third chapter. The Lord have a scale by which you can measure and see if the Lord sent your preacher. That's right. Jeremiah 3, and we're going to start at verse 14. Jeremiah 3 and 14. Go ahead and read. Turn, O backsliding children, uh -huh. saith the Lord. Go ahead. For I am married unto you. Uh -huh. And I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Go ahead. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. He said, look, turn, O backsliding children, and I will give you pastors according to my heart. That's right. That will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Mm -hmm. Knowledge and understanding, sisters and brothers. That's right. Now let me show you, if you have understanding, what you will have to deal with. Let's go into 110 chapter Psalm. 111 chapter Psalm, we're going to read one verse. Verse 10. Psalms 111 and verse 10. These things, this is how the preacher has to seek out what's written. So he will know what to teach you, so you will know what the Lord wants you to do. So the Lord lets you know, say, look, I will... Send you pastors who will feed you with knowledge 
and understanding. That's right. Verse 10, go ahead and read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, go ahead. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. And a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. That's right. Now, if you don't do the commandment, then this is the right, reverse side. Then you don't have no understanding. Yeah, no understanding. Because one thing you understand, sisters and brothers, there is no club. That's right. No group, no city, no state, no country that can operate without law. That's right. By which they must live. And how is it that God is going to operate this entire universe without a law? That's right. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And a good understanding are all days that do his commandment. That's what the Lord said he's going to send you preachers that's going to teach you knowledge and understand. That's right, brother. And you ain't going to have no understanding if you don't keep the law that's system, right, brother. Bro. You ain't going to have it. Mm -mm. Why? It's because you don't know what is wrong and what's right. Let's go into Romans the 7th chapter and have a look at it. Romans the 7th chapter. You're going to tell people they don't have to keep no law. Then you're telling people that they don't have to be no order. So everything that come in your mind is good, no matter what it is. Because when there is no law, sisters and brothers, there is no order, even in the word of God. Romans 7 and verse 7. We're going to see about this law, that the Lord, this commandment that the Lord said, you have a good understanding if you keep. Verse 7, go ahead. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. That's what people are telling you nowadays. Oh, you don't have to keep that old law. It ain't no good. Is the law sin? God forbid. Go ahead and read. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law. Wait a minute. You mean the law is what pointed out sin? Yes, sisters and brothers. The biblical definition of sin is the transgression of the law. That's right. So he had not known sin but by the law. Go ahead and read. For I had not known lust as if the law had said thou should not covet. Paul didn't even know that he was coveting another man's property. Except the law said thou should not covet. Mm -hmm. He didn't know he was lusting after somebody else's property. Go ahead and read what verse? Eight. Uh-huh. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. Uh-huh. For without the law, sin was dead. Wait a minute. Sin, taking occasion by the commandment, worked in me all kind of uncleanness. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the commandments pointed out to Paul what was clean and what was not unclean. That's right, bro. The commandments, sisters and brothers, go ahead and read. For I was alive without the law once. Uh-huh. And when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Look, Paul said he was alive without the law. That's alive what? A live sinner. Uh-huh. Very active. <laughs> but when the law came, the commandments came and told him he was wrong, he stopped sinning. That means that old Paul died. That's right. He didn't die physically, otherwise he wouldn't have written this book. He said, I died. Go ahead and read. Ten. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. Look what the commandments is ordained to, sisters and brothers. It is ordained to life. That's right. Paul said the commandment which is ordained to life, I found to be unto death. What? You had to die. That old sinful Paul had to die in order for that godly Paul to live. Mm -hmm. And how is it that the godly Paul lived? He lived by the commandments. That's why I said, it is not I, but it is Christ which is in me. How does the Lord get in you to make you live to him? Through his commandments his command. and his laws and his statutes. So the commandments are ordained to life. Skip down to verse 12 and go ahead. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. But so the law is holy and the commandments are holy and just and good. What can you have against that sister and brother? How's the man going to tell you the commandments got a problem? What is wrong with thou shalt not kill? What is wrong with saying thou shalt not steal? What is wrong with me not committing a man, adultery with a man's wife? That's what right. is wrong with me not bearing false witness and lying on somebody? Mm -hmm. Is something wrong with that? No, what is sir. wrong with honor thy mother and thy father? What's wrong with that? The commandments are holy, the just, and the good. Skip down to verse 25. And look what Paul said here. Go ahead. 14. Uh, verse 14, mm -hmm. brother. Go ahead. For we know that the law is spiritual, uh -huh. but I am carnal, soul under sin. No, he said, but we know that the law is spiritual. He said, but I am carnal, soul under sin. Sisters and brothers, that's why we cannot lean on our own understanding. We are soul under sin. So in order to be holy, we must lean on the law. Because we soul under sin. And look what Paul said, let you know that we soul under sin. 
Verse 25, go ahead. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, uh -huh. but the flesh the law of sin. He said, I thank God that with my mind I serve the law of God. Mm -hmm. This is the Apostle Paul That's telling right. you this. But with my flesh I serve the law of sin. When you stop meditating on the law of God, you're subject to anything. That's sister. right, brother. You're subject to anything. Now let's go into Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Because I just want to let you know that when the Lord said, look, the, he going to send you pastors that going to teach you knowledge and understanding. And a good understanding have all laid to keep his command. So his pastors that he sent, his preachers that he sent, his teachers that he sent is going to teach you the commandments. Not teach you against them. Matthew 22 and verse 35. Because we're going to show you what love really is. Verse 35. Go ahead and read. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Go ahead. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Uh-huh. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Uh-huh. This is the first and great commandment. He said, You're going to love the Lord with every fiber in you. That's the first and great commandment. Go ahead and read. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And the second is... Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Go ahead and read. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. It does not replace the law. That's right, brother. It tells you they are all hung on this law. That's and I'm going to show you what, the, what it means when it said they hang on this law. Mm -hmm. Because you don't understand what love is. We're going to show you what love is. Let's go into St. John, the 14th chapter. Look what Jesus said to you here. Said to you here. Okay. St. John 14 and read verse 15. 14 and 15. Okay, read it. If you love me, keep my commandments. Wait a minute. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's right. Is this something new, sister? No, no. no. It's the same old stuff that's always old been. I mean, now, this is Jesus talking, isn't it? That's right, brother. Now, let's go back to the Old Testament and see what it has to say. Let's go on to Deuteronomy the 10th chapter. Mm -hmm. Because people don't, you don't understand what love is. No, no. Sure, law, love is the new law, but it's always been new. But then Solomon tell you, ain't nothing new under the sun. That's right, brother. Deuteronomy, 10th chapter, and let's start at verse 12, 10 and 12. Go ahead and read. And now, Israel, what do if the Lord thy God require thee? And now, O Israel, what is it that the Lord thy God require of thee? Go ahead and read. But to fear the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to walk in all his ways, Go ahead. and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. But to fear the Lord, walk in all his ways, and to love. And to serve thy God with all our heart and all our soul. Go ahead and read. To keep the commandments of the Lord uh -huh. and his statutes. Go ahead. Which I command thee this day for thy good. And to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes that I command you this day. Because when the Lord gave it to Moses, he didn't have to change no more. He is perfect. He don't give you something that he's going to change later. Mm -mm. The law sure that I gave you this day. He said, that is what I require if you love me. Mm -hmm. Now let's see if anything changed. Let's go back to St. John, the 15th chapter. I want to let you know that one God is the God of this whole book. Just That's enough. right, brother. He don't change. No, no. He is perfect. He don't have to give you something and come back later and say, I got to change it. That implies that he have a flaw. That's right, brother. And God have no flaw. He is holy. St. John 15 and verse 1. St. John 15 and 1. Okay, read it. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband in uh, he said, I'm the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Skip down to verse 4 and go ahead. Abide in me, and I in you. Uh -huh. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. He said, abide in me, and I in you. Can't no branch bear fruit of itself if it break off in a drought, so you have to abide in me. Skip down to verse 8 and go ahead. Verse 8 and go ahead. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, uh -huh. so shall you be my disciple. Go ahead. As the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. He said, now, as the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Go ahead and read. Continue in my love. Continue in my love. How? If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. If you keep my commandments, right, you shall brother. abide in my love. <laughs> 
Just like I had yes, to keep sir. the Father's plain, bro. and abide in his love. <laughs> Do you understand, sisters and brothers? Yes, sir. This is the Lord talking here. Here it is. Who is it that's going to reverse the Lord's word? Nobody. He said, if you keep, keep my, my commandment. commandment, you shall abide <laughs> in my love. It ain't no new commandment, sisters and brothers. In fact, when the newness of it is that it's more bonding. And I'm going to show you what he's saying here. Let's go on to St. John, the 13th chapter. St. John, the 13th chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 33. We're going to show you what new is. Go ahead and read. Little children, just a little while I am with you. You shall seek me, and as I go, as I said unto the Jews, whether I go, you cannot come. Uh -huh. So now I say to you. Go ahead. A new commandment I give unto you, uh -huh. that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. He said, look, a new commandment that I give you, that you love one another. As I have also loved you, that you love one another. Mm. That's a new commandment. That's right. Now let's go have a real good look at this new commandment. Okay. Let's go into Romans, the 13th chapter. Mm -hmm. Romans, the 13th chapter. We're going to have us a look at this new commandment. It's obvious that people have not dealt with it. Oh, no. Why? You just listen to their conversation. I've never seen so much fuss made over trying to destroy the commandments that God gave us. I've never seen this kind of fuss. Mm -hmm. Everybody's trying to kill the Lord's commandments. Everybody's spitting on the law. So, okay, let's read this new commandment. R Romans 13 and verse 8. 13 and 8. Go ahead and read. Oh, no man, anything Go ahead. but to love one another. Uh -huh. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Okay, oh, no man, anything but to love one another. For he that love one another hath fulfilled the law. That's Isn't that right. what he said? That's what he said. Go ahead. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Wait a minute now. <laughs> For this thou shalt not commit adultery? Wait a minute. That's all like the old commandment. That's the old commandment, bro. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt not kill. Wait a minute. You sure you ain't reading uh, uh, Leviticus, the 20th chapter? No, sir. You sure? No, this is You mean this is Romans, Romans the 13th, the 13th chapter, chapter? Yes, it is. Oh, thou shalt not commit adultery. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt not steal. Uh huh. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Uh huh. Thou shalt not covet. Go ahead. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Whoa, wait a minute. Paul just told you what love is. He did. And if there be any other commandment, it should be like you said, thou should love thy neighbor as the same. That's right, bro. Read the next verse. Mm -hmm. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Uh-huh. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. That is the real love, That's sisters it, and bro. brothers. Make it plain. You bro. work no ill to your neighbor. That's if right. you love your neighbor, you won't kill him. Mm. If you love your neighbor, you won't steal from him. You won't commit adultery with his wife. You won't lie on it. That's right. And if you love the Lord your God, you're going to keep his commandments. You're going to honor the Sabbath day to keep it over. You're not going to take the Lord God's uh, uh, name in vain. That's right, brother. So that's what love is. But Paul said, look, if there be any other commandment, this is this new commandment that we read about. This is new about. commandment we read about. He said, thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. Let's go and see just how new this commandment is. Okay. Let's go back to Leviticus, the law. Leviticus, the 19th chapter. This is the law mm -hmm. we're going to read. The same law that Moses wrote. That's right, brother. That the Lord dictated to him. The law, sisters and brothers. That's what we're dealing with. The law. The law. 19 and verse 18. Leviticus 19 chapter. And we're going to read one verse. Verse 18. Okay, go ahead. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Uh-huh. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Wait a minute. Don't bear any grudge against thy neighbor mm. as thy, and thyself. But thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. As thyself. Oh, you mean that was a, was not an original with Paul? No, sir. No, sisters That's and brothers. Got it the Lord is God, and He changed not. That's he is right. perfect. What He gave Moses is good for the thousand years of peace, even until the coming of the Father's King. That's right. Thou shall love thy neighbor as, as thyself. thyself. Well, make it plain. But He brother. said that is the new commandment, didn't He? The new sisters and brothers, 
What do we have to read you? What do we have to read you? We're going to throw a little something in because I want you to understand what I'm mm -hmm. talking about. I think it's in First John, the second chapter. Okay. I want to look at something here. Mm -hmm. Because we have too many people that are trying to kill the law of God. You know what they're trying to do to you? They're trying to take your salvation That's what they're trying they're to trying do, They're trying bro. to rob yeah, you of your crown. Mm -hmm. And Jesus told you, let no man take your let crown no away man. from you. That's what he said, bro. Let's start at 2 and 1. Saint John, 1 John 2 and 1. Go ahead and read. My little children, these things write out unto you that you sin not. Uh-huh. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. First thing he said, don't sin. But if you do sin, we have somebody there, a judge advocate, that's going to plead our cause with the Father. That's if you sin inadvertently. Yes, Go ahead and that's read. That's right. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And he is the sacrifice for our sins. Go ahead and read. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Go ahead. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his command. And hereby we do know that we know the Lord if we keep his commandments, Man, sisters and brothers. Right, brother. That's how you know that you know that's the Lord. That's how we know. Go ahead and read. He that saith, I know him, and keep him not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. And he that say that he know God. Now, this is the apostle here. This is not Moses. That's this right. is not Isaiah. That's right, this bro. is not Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. Not Zechariah. This is the apostle John. That's right. Even the one that wrote Revelation. That's right, brother. So he had to be up on what he's talking about. He that say he know him, and keep it not his commandment, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. I don't care who you are or how much writing in Paul you try to hide under and miss and twist. Go ahead and read. Five. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Wait a minute. And if you keep his word, verily is the love of God perfected. Didn't, you, didn't Jesus tell you if you love him or to abide in him, you, in his love? That's what he said. If you want to abide in his love, keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. Go ahead and read. Hereby know we that we are in him. Uh -huh. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Go ahead. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, uh -huh. but an old commandment which he had from the beginning. Look, I want you to listen to what Peter said. He said, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you had from the beginning. But go ahead and read. The, Something else. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Go ahead. Again, a new commandment I write unto you. Which thing is true in him and in you. He said, but then I write a new commandment. He already told you he didn't write nothing that, new. That's but right. now he write a new. Go ahead and read. Because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. Uh-huh. He that saith he is in the light and hate of his brother is in darkness even until now. See, in the old days, sisters and brothers, you could say you hate your brother, but you didn't have to do nothing to him. Mm -hmm. You were straight. But the Lord came and he said, if you hate your brother, you are still in trouble. That's You're true. not supposed to have an evil mindset. Mm -hmm. So Peter said, I didn't bring no new commandment to you. I brought old. But what is new? This commandment is more command, com uh, uh, binding. You used to could think evil, but don't do it. You were straight. Now says Jesus came, you can't even think evil. That's right. You have to keep the commandments. I have something I want to leave with you. I'm going to leave this with you, sisters and brothers. And this is something that I'm leaving you out of love. And this is real love, because I'm mm -hmm. giving you love. What is love? It's just like when you have a bad child, and you spank your child. You do it out of love, because if you don't spank him and correct him, the authorities, when he do wrong, is going to kill him or put him away. So I'm going to leave this with you, and I want you to pay attention to it. Proverbs 28, chapter. Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28, and let's read verse 4. Go ahead and read. They that forsake the law praise the wicked, uh -huh. but such as keep the law contend with them. They that forsake the law, mm -hmm. that's God's commandment, sisters and brother. they praise the wicked. Mm -hmm. How is it that you praise the wicked? Because if you tell the wicked there is no law, he don't have nothing to stop him from committing wicked. Mm -hmm. But those of us that keep the law, we're going to contend with you. That's right. And we'll let you walk away with that easy kill. Kill the law of God and walk. Skip down to verse 9 and read it. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. And he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is going to be an abomination That's to right, God. Brother. 
Sisters and brothers, Make it plain, brother. the commandments, like Paul says, is this. holy, just, and good. Yes, it is. And like the Lord said, like Paul said, and like Moses said, love is the keeping of the commandment. I thank you for your time. Thank you for joining the Israel of God's weekly Bible study telecast with Pastor Henry Bowie, where we bring you the written words of God. An extended version of tonight's telecast is available on CD or cassette. Please join us for our weekly service, Saturdays at 10 or again at 1.30. If you would like to send an offering or your tithes, we are located at 25 